Uh, hey, welcome to Buffy's Angels, one of the podcasts on the internet where two bros talk about Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Uh, I'm Daniel Ehrenberg. I've watched every episode of Buffy the Vampire Slayer numerous times. And over there is Logan B. Adair, my co-host. B- the B, you should change it. It's just Sanford Buffy. I'm pretty sure I said that first episode we ever did. Well, I'm bringing it back. That's a callback. If you don't remember a joke and you say it again, that's a callback. Um, I think Logan, it's called a callback even if you do remember it. I, I, yeah, a lot of people do it intentionally. That's, well, you know, those people are smarter than I. Uh, uh, why do you Why do you say that we... Did you just learn that like a lot of there there are a lot of podcasts? No, bros? no, that's why I never wanted to start a Buffy podcast because it's 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 trodden ground. But ours is great because you've never seen it before. Yeah, I agree. There's like a cool element to that, especially this week where a few things I brought up last week actually came into play this week, and I was like, "Damn, I should write this show." <laughs> oh, Logan thinks he should write a, a TV show or movie. We're watching. What a new concept for the show! <laughs> All right. All right. Uh, this week, phases and bewitched, bothered and bewildered. Uh, let's get into it, Logan. Uh, phases air January 27th, 1998. You want to know what was going on in the world that week? Oh, yeah. Well, I'll tell you what happened the day before this, Logan. I'll I'll give you a little quote, a little impression. You ready? Mm-hmm. I did not have sexual relations with that woman, Miss Lewinsky. Yeah. What happened last week where we talked about this? Well, it was it, Paula Jones showed up last week, but now Monica Lewinsky. And uh, he had to deliver that. And the two sp- weeks back to back. Yeah. Back to back. Uh, because that it opened up the floodgates, bro. And then it was the State of the Union address also. That, and he had to address that to the union. Wild shit. And. Uh, <laughs> Why didn't Trump ever have to do any of that stuff? Because the world's different now. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. I guess he's paying for it now. Uh, eh, he'll be fine. I really think so. Uh, all right, what else is going on, Logan? You want to know the top five movies in America? Oh, yeah. Well, Let me guess. Titanic, I, Good Will Hunting, As Good As It Gets. No, well, <laughs> yes, <laughs> pretty much. But uh, number two after Titanic was a new movie, Spice World. Yeah. All right. Okay, okay. Spice World. That was the Spice Girls movie. I once babysat a little girl and I watched that movie with her. And that's how I've seen Spice World. Uh, but I wasn't seeing Spice World in theaters. I was seeing the movie that opened at number nine at the box office, Phantoms. Which was a sci-fi thriller with Ben Affleck, and uh, it also had one of those Scream covers where it's like a lineup of all the hot young guys. Oh yeah, I think I know that. <laughs> yeah. Who are, who are the other hot guys? Boy, I wish I could remember a single one of them. But I, God, yeah, who was in it? I feel like John Voight was in it or something. John Voight. <laughs> well, that wasn't one of the hot young ones. But... <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, I mean, it's probably best remembered today because there's a line in Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back where Jay tells Ben Affleck that he was the bomb in Phantoms. Uh, oh, here we go. Peter O'Toole is who I was thinking of, by the way, not John Voight. And uh, Rose McGowan was in it, and Liev Schreiber. They used the whole cast wow. to scream. <laughs> uh, and Nikki Cat, the great Nikki Cat, from okay. many Richard Linklater films. So Schreiber is one of the hot guys, too? Yeah, he was a hot man at that point. Sexy. <laughs> Ray Donovan. All right, uh, that wasn't the only thing going on in Spice Girl land this week. What a week for the Spice Girls, Logan. Because it was the week of the 25th annual American Music Awards. All right, and the Spice Girls were the big winners, winning three awards, including Best Pop Act. And uh, these awards were hosted by Drew Carey. Okay, featured some great performances. Matchbox 20 doing... 
I want to push you around. Well, I will. I like them. What do you? How do you feel? Uh, I mean, they're bad, but they got like I have, six great songs. <laughs> I have fond memories of them. I feel like if I had free tickets to go see them live, I would just because they have like fifteen hits or something. So you would never be bored. You'd always be like, ah, I know that one. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. All right, and uh, Puff Daddy and Mace performed "It's All About the Benjamins, Baby." What a song that was. That's money. That's right. Correct. It's the first time I heard that referred to as the Benjamins was in that song. Really? No, not in that movie? What movie? Dead. Oh, wait. Is that, what's that movie called? Dead Presidents? That's no Dead one. Presidents. Yeah, that's yeah, a totally no different thing, bro. Sorry, sorry. Also, I don't think I'd seen that yet at this point. I haven't either, but I know what it is. Great. You know what things are and not have seen them. I guess that's true, Logan. That's a five-star movie. Uh, but I, I also wrote down best alternative act because I was excited about that. The winner was Bush, one of my favorite bands in the 90s with Gavin Rossdale, the sexiest man in America. Remember that cover of him on the Rolling Stone where he was wearing that, <laughs> that white, that wet t-shirt? No, that was one of those like uh, Kazam Shazam things in my brain. Oh. Yeah. Turns out that oh. never happened. Okay. Um, also, Bone Thugs in Harmony. They won Best R&B Slash Rap Act. And uh, and they're going to miss everybody. Uh, that's a great Bone Thugs in Harmony line. Okay. The big music release that week, Logan, the Dixie Chicks with their first album, Wide Open Spaces. It's a huge album. Now, they're just talking. They're just called the chicks these days, Logan, because of the woke mind virus. Yeah. You guys know what I'm talking about? Yeah. But uh, back then, they were the Dixie Chicks, and we loved them. Natalie Maines, the other two. You can really only name one of them? Yeah, I thought I could name them all, but like, apparently <laughs> just one. <laughs> uh, all right. What else was going on that week? I'll tell you. You want to know top the charts in music? I know it, but you can tell everybody else. Together Again by uh, Janet Jackson. And I'll tell you what, title alone, I did not know what that song was. So I watched the music video this morning. and That was part of your research, that was watching part- the music <laughs> yeah. video. For- we were late recording, not really late, but uh, <laughs> but I came on. And he was like, I'm still doing research. He was, well, I guess he was watching this music video. I, no I, I had already watched it by that point. All right. I was looking up the band that plays the bronze <laughs> in one of the episodes. <laughs> All right. But this song, what a banger, Logan. I, I, di- I probably haven't he- thought of this song until this since this week when it was number one in America. But I remember it as soon as I heard it. And it's great. You should end the episode with that. Oh, I was going to do a Matchbox 20 song, but that's fine also. By the way, did she only did she go by just Janet? No, I believe she had an album called Janet, though. And so people were calling her that around that time. When I saw what topped the charts, it said by Janet. And I was like, oh, I never heard her known as that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, she had an album called Janet, all lowercase with a period. Okay, that's interesting. Yeah. A little ahead of her time. I feel like Ariana Grande would do something like that. <laughs> You're probably right. I feel like she has. Yeah. And um, I don't think so. Uh, do you know what was number one over there in the in the UK? Our old friends in the in the United Kingdom. No, what's that? It was an Usher song. You make me want to be the one. Start a new relationship. What a classic. Yeah, he's good, right? I love Usher. He's doing a residency right now in Las Vegas. I, I, every time I see the billboards, I'm like, man, I should go to that. He must. He had to have lived a great life. He's oh, my alive, God. But... What a king. I mean, he became famous when he was like 19 or something. And like he's still just like getting that dick wet to this very day. And uh, <laughs> he also one of my top 10 favorite songs of all time is an Usher song. Love in this club. Part one. You said top three favorite top 10. Oh, OK. Yeah. All right, we got to make that list one day. Maybe. All right, what else happened this week? A lot of stuff. I got something. Tell me. Uh, you ever see a little show called 13 Reasons Why? <laughs> oh, my God, I hate you. <laughs> Somebody had a birthday. Who? Day, all right. It's the guy who played Tyler, okay? He, he The actor, his name is Devin Druid. He was born today, January 27th. Well, you know who so. was born the day after this? What? 
that Ariel Winter from Modern Family. You know, oh. you know the stacked one. Yeah, I do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, what else we got? The uh, Sundance Film Festival happened. The 14th annual Sundance Film Festival. What a big, big week it was. Slam won uh, the Grand Jury Prize. That was kind of a lame movie about slam poetry. But the Best Documentary Prize was won by Frat House. You know who directed that? No. A young Todd Phillips. Oh, they're going to say Todd Field. Oh, close. You got the Todd right. Uh, Well, after you said said Todd, and then I thought you were going to say Todd Oh, (laughs) no, Phillips. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Best directing went to a first time. Was film. that his start? Sorry. Uh, it, I think it was his second doc. And then right after that was when he started on, uh, he made Road Trip. Okay. Is he doing the second Joker movie? Oh, you better believe he is. Foley <laughs> adieu. It finished filming yesterday with Lady Gaga's Harleen the Quinzel. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, that, isn't that stupid that her real name is Harleen Quinzel? <laughs> Is that is that comic? Is that <laughs> yeah, true to the comic? True to the comic. <laughs> well. well, actually, not Harley Quinn was introduced in the animated series, so I guess it's true to that. Really, I never knew that. Yeah. Um. All right. Best director at the Sundance Film Festival is a young Darren Aronofsky with his first film, Pie. All right. He's he's still working. And the Screenwriting Award went to Lisa Choladenko for High Art, and she's still working. She made that Kids Are All Right movie. Uh, other, some other notable debuts at the Sundance Film Festival that year. Buffalo 66 by Vincent wow, Gallo. Wow, one of your favorites. One of my favorites. The Opposite of Sex by Don Roos, which features a great Christina Ricci performance. And uh, David Mamet's The Spanish Prisoner, one of his best movies. Probably his second best movie. House of Games. Yeah. I love that one. Right? I love that one. Um, is that all I got? WCW Nitro expanded to three hours. Oh, <laughs> you want <laughs> nothing really happened on Raw, but I liked this. Uh so on on uh the most recent WCW pay per view, Kevin Nash power bombed uh the big show and broke his neck. Okay. And so they outlawed they did a storyline where they outlawed the power bomb. They were going to take you to prison if you performed it. Broke and his own neck or the Big Show's neck? He broke the Big Show's neck. Okay, okay. So Kevin Nash in this episode Damn, did he did the power bomb to somebody and then he got arrested, put in handcuffs. And while they were taking away, him away, he's yelling, Attica! <laughs> Attica! Wow, that's pretty funny. <laughs> pretty good stuff. <laughs> All right. Um... All right, that's all I got. All right, that was pretty good. Yeah. Okay, so let's get into Phases, the big werewolf episode of Buffy. Only 7.9 on IMDb. Seemed pretty low, honestly. I really enjoyed this episode. You know, I think it gets underrated because the werewolf costume is bad. Oh, I love it. <laughs> it gets better later on. It's so cool. <laughs> I, I like how the eyes move, but the mouth does look like just plastic teeth. They start showing it like quick cuts. You see it for like two seconds here, two seconds there. And then you see it more. And I, I liked it. I appreciated the effort. You really get a it. good look at it when, in that scene with Angel. And it looks pretty bad. In the, uh, in the like when he kills the one yeah. lady? Yeah. What was her name? Teresa. <laughs> Teresa. Teresa. All right. Um, so this episode was written by Rob Des Hotel and Dean Batali, who... Uh, you know, they've been with us for a while. They wrote Never yeah, Kill real, a Boy. All, everybody, first... real throwback crew. Yeah. All these people. <laughs> Never Kill a Boy on the first day. What else? I think The Puppet Show. I want to say Inca Mummy Girl. Uh, and I believe this is their last episode of Buffy. After oh, this... that's very upsetting. Oh, sorry. And after this, they went to uh, go write for uh, That 70s Show. Okay. <laughs> that's fun. Yeah. Uh, but uh, And it's directed by our old friend, Bruce. Seth Green, which I think is apropos because it's a very heavy Seth Green episode. Yeah, I thought the same thing. That was very cool. Yeah. Uh, All right. This aired, did I say this? January 27th, 1998? Probably. All right. And uh, 
I'm 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 done yapping. Let's hear Logan's notes being scroted. Okay. Well, first note, no mom in this episode. <laughs> Is that disappointing? You'll see her in the next one. No Jenny Calendar in this episode. Yeah. And I, and I have a question. When's the last time we saw Principal Snyder? I know. I actually thought about that this week because I saw a teacher at one point and I was like, oh, I think that's Snyder. But it was just an extra. And I was like, like, when the double, fuck did we see Snyder? We had a double I don't think we saw him. And then the two, the week before, I don't remember seeing yeah, him. And then I, we had another double I don't think we saw him. I think No, it's like we saw him. That he was in, I think, What's My Line. Was he in the school with the cop, maybe? Yeah, that's what I think. I, but I'm not even 100% sure. I don't remember him like reacting to that cop shooting. Yeah, I feel like we haven't Do seen him. Do you want me to check on this? Eight, nine episodes. Yeah, sure. That would that'd be interesting. But... Okay, we start at the, tr- the trophy case. Last time we th- we learned that Amy was going to be in this batch of episodes, and I when I asked the trophy case, I was like, "Oh, is she going to be in this one?" But no, she's not. What's, it was just Oz observing the eyes. What's my line? Part one, by the way, is okay. is the and we won't even see him next week. The week after, he'll he'll be in the last four episodes of the season. So we had like ten episodes off of Buffy. Yeah. All you know. right. So, yeah, I, I, I was excited for you with the trophy case because it's a, ne- a reference to your favorite episode of Buffy, Witch. Yes, but we get a bigger reference in the next episode, which is even better. But, yes, yeah, so, but Oz was like, the fucking eyes are looking at me. Yeah, they follow you around. Yeah. Um, it's crazy how nobody else noticed that. Only Oz, their friend. Well, Oz is, uh, you know, he's, yeah. <laughs> By the way, Oz, does he have dark hair in this episode? Yeah, but it's light in the next one. Yeah, I, I noticed it was light, and then I was like, oh, I wonder if it was light in the one before, but I didn't go back and check. Willow acknowledges it. She says, Oz has his cool hair today. Oh, I didn't even notice that yeah. one. That's that's pretty funny. Uh, yeah, but, any, but anyway, he's like looking at the thing, and uh, we learned that Oz and Willow... Went on a little date. You better believe it. And it went, went pretty well. Yeah, we don't know what movie they saw because they can't remember, but the popcorn I think was Shakespeare good. in Love. Could have been Shakespeare in Love. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, and then maybe Titanic. So, oh, I'm sure it was Titanic. You're, yeah. you're probably right. Um, so th- this is so Larry comes over. Remember Larry from, what from the Halloween that? episode? He was From a the pirate. Halloween episode. Oh, right, because he was raping and pillaging. Yeah, of course. And, was that a Viking Larry. thing? Uh, I think it a pirate them, or Viking. Thing? I want to say both of them did it. A lot of raping right. back in those days. Yeah, you're probably right. That, if anyone has a sword, they're probably raping somebody. Except else. for Drew McIntyre. <laughs> yeah, he's never done anything <laughs> like that. Oh man. Uh, anyway, so. But he Larry comes over and he's being a real creep. He's like knocking girls' books over, and he's like hitting on Buffy. He's doing all the all the weird guy moves. He also references the thigh master, which was a popular exercise item around this time. Yeah, okay. Suzanne yeah. Summers used to do infomercials for it. Uh, all right, uh, <laughs> and so. Here we. This is one of the things I brought up last week, where I said that I, it would be cool if Buffy was, or if Willow was talking to Buffy, like recapping Buffy on what's happened between her and Oz. And then here we get that she's ta- she's telling Buffy everything that's been going on. And and basically, what we learn in this scene is that Willow is DTF. She oh, yeah. is ready, but Oz is playing it cool. He's now he's not making the first move. Yeah, well, Oz plays everything a little cool. He's a cool guy. He is a cool guy. I feel like since moment one, he's been pretty cool. Yeah. What was the first time we ever saw him? Canapé. Oh, no, the first time we saw him was in uh, Inca Mummy Girl when he checks her out as an Eskimo. That's right, that's right. He, they had like a few of those cute moments where yeah. they like, bumped into her when she was... Uh, a ghost. A ghost, right. A slutty then, ghost. Yeah, and then he saw her as the slut later and was like, who is that girl? Right? <laughs> that's right, yeah. <laughs> Uh, all right so well what happened i already lost where we were um oh so willow basically is like why is xander i I don't i think they're not still not over each other they have like now that they're with other people they're sort of upset 
Yeah, right? she makes that joke in the scene, like, uh, like let's call Z- Buffy says let's call Xander and hang out tonight, and she and she goes fine, I'll call him at his new number one eight hundred. I'm dating a skanky hoe. Yeah, how about that? And Buffy gives her a nice meow. Meow. I I didn't know that Willow was a slut shamer. I didn't know that that was a <laughs> everyone part was a Willow slut shamer back then. Yeah, you're right. Uh, but then, but then, but then Xander does the same thing. He like he stops making out with Cordelia to be like, man, I I don't really see what Willow sees in Oz. That doesn't make a lot of sense to me. That she's like she could do way better. They're not even just making out. They're like in a car at night alone. Like he could be getting it going. She says she's like I'm here to do terrible things. I don't want to tell my father about. She yeah. says something very similar to that. And he's talking about Willow, a girl he rejected for the last 10 years, probably. Yeah. Um, she calls her father daddy in that scene, I think, just to turn Xander on. Really? You think she doesn't <laughs> do that normally? But no. she That wasn't a thing back then. That's like a, that's like within the last f- five, six, seven years, right? 10 years. Yeah, since the, since, uh, the pornography invested in incest. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm not really sure when that started. Yeah, but we see a werewolf watching, and we're like, "Oh no!" And then we go to credits, and then we come back from the credits, and the werewolf attacks them, but they get away, right? Yeah, they get away. They don't die in this episode. Luckily, I was very concerned for a second there. Yeah, but they then the next day they're like, "Hey, fucking werewolf attacked us. Here's our card. This is like where it all happened." And uh, Giles said something fun, something that I th- actually thought he was like, "Oh, I'm excited. This is," this, he he says, "This is one of the classics," and that's yeah. one of what I thought. This yeah. It's like what, like if you're gonna make a show about vampires, then werewolves would be like a top five draft pick. Yeah, the- it's it's wild that they got up to like hyena ladies and and uh, I mean hyena men and and <laughs> praying mantis ladies before this. But yeah, they're starting to do that a little bit in the season. Like some assembly required is kind of their take on Frankenstein. Yeah. And then they did the Inca Mummy episode and they had a ventriloquist now- episode before they had a <laughs> It's uh, true. <laughs> they had a, 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 an evil computer episode before. That did, that made no sense. That gets a nice ref in the Great in, episode though. Was it this episode? Or the, yeah, it was this episode. Which one? In this one, they reference I wrote about Eugene. What do they say? Um, uh, when the guy hung himself. No, Buffy's like one. That's one of my favorite parts of Buffy. So far. <laughs> Buffy's questioning like how much she really helps the town or whatever because of shit that dude Kane is saying, and uh, and Xander's like, hey, if you, if you never showed up in this town, I'd be a hyena right now, and Bu- and Willow would be married to Robbie the robot. Wow, I I didn't even notice that that was what that was. Yeah, but okay, there we go. Then we go. All right, so we go to self defense, like gym class. The woman's teaching self defense. Yeah, right. Uh, who is this woman? Is she important? No, the gym teacher. No, I looked her up. She's nobody. Okay, well, we. This is where we meet Teresa, and I guess this is important because she dies later in the episode. So yeah, there's she, Teresa. Teresa, and uh, you know. Larry's hitting on her as always, and and so Buffy does that self defense shit with him, and he grabs her in the butt. Yeah, he fucking grabs her right in the butt, and then she flips him over. Willow's like, "Hey, you gotta like not be so cool because you're just a normal girl right now." But she's like, "Fuck that!" And then she flips him, and you're like, "Yeah, go Buffy." You know, it it's already though like he's hitting on Teresa, and then Buffy shows up, and she and kind of intimidates larry a little bit so i feel like the school is already understanding like buffy's not like normal people yeah well the principal knows right i don't know what the principal knows in terms of buffy the principal knows about the uh, hellmouth the stuff. hellmouth stuff yeah okay i guess that's a thing we don't really know um the, but then we basically they uh, while they were doing that, they had done research. We learned that I got I didn't, is this real? This is the first time I ever heard this in something. Instead of a werewolf only coming out when there's a full moon, it comes out on the night of the full moon, but then also on the night on either side of the full moon. Yeah, three that's new th- three nights in a row. I think that's just a Buffy lore thing, but it comes into play. Does it? Why is that so important? Oh, I guess 
I mean, I have a, I actually have a question about that a little later on. I mean, one but, of our main characters is a werewolf now, so they're going to have to deal with werewolfness. For three days? I mean, sometimes. It's just like, uh, you know how they've got that uh, that library cage that, that they lock people in sometimes? Yeah, I mean, that uh, happened once. I know, but so, that comes into play more soon because that's how, you know, like Oz locks up. Oh, that's fun. Yeah. All right. Uh, so then, so Buffy and Giles go out looking for the werewolf at night, and they go to Lover's Lookout from the Scary <laughs> Movie, and oh they're God. looking, they're looking around, and they're looking for the werewolf. And did they learn that it go, it, go, it goes to like where people are fucking, or did that is that a Kane thing? That's a Kane thing. They just go there because that's where Xander oh, and Cordelia right. saw it. Right. I was wondering why they went there. Uh, you're right. But so Kane sees them and he's like, whoa, what do we have here? Giles. He doesn't say Giles, but he's like, what? We have this old man with this young lady. What is going on? Yeah. And they're like, no, it's not what you think. We're actually trying to find a werewolf. And he's like, what? Me too. And, well, actually, she gets caught in a net, right? Uh, yeah. Happens. Did you know this actor? No, I don't think so. I'm a fan. Jack Conley. He's been in a lot of stuff. If you're a fan of the Fast and the Furious franchise, which I am, he plays Paul Walker's FBI boss. All right. And when in like the first movie? In the fourth one. Oh, that's the one I've seen the least. I just watched it a few days ago, so it's fresh. <laughs> um, Braga? Is that that one? Yeah, that's that one Braga. for sure. Is that where Letty dies? It is. Uh, right? Yes, yes, it is. Yeah. Um, I'll tell you what else. He played um, Kim Kelly's stepfather in Freaks and Geeks. Wow. All Who's right. Kim Kelly. Yeah, that's uh, the Busy Phillips character. Oh, okay. And uh, but she was a Daniel D'Souza. De what was that guy's name? Desario. Oh, god damn, that was pretty good. But we'll we'll get to know him even more because he comes back as a different character on Angel, and uh, he's in a bunch of episodes over there. Okay. That's very cool. Mm -hmm. um, all right. So what else happened with Kane? Oh, he tells them basically they go to where people are are getting it on. Right. So so they're like, well, let's go. It's probably the bronze. Let's get there before he does. Yes. But before we get to the bronze, we see a little angel scene. And I guess this is where we see a lot of the werewolf, apparently, according to the D train. And he kills Teresa. I guess we don't yeah. know it's Teresa at the time, do we? No, we know. do, because he goes, we see him first uh, confront her on the street. Oh, yeah. He says, like, oh, you're a friend of Buffy's. I, let's go to let's go to the hangout. Yeah. Or let's go to, I'll take no, you home. No, yeah, I'll walk you home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, but then, all right, so then we go to the bronze. Who's the band? Who's the band playing at the bronze? All right, it's a band called Lotion. All right, and you'll see a lot of Lotion posters in this episode. And uh, they were a minor alternative rock band of the 90s. They opened for a lot of better bands. And uh, this was sort of their last stab at relevancy. They were They were on tour with Frank Black from the Pixies. And they stopped off, did a Buffy episode, and about three years later, they broke up. Oh, very upsetting. Yeah. It happens. Um, all right. You, 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 were you a fan of them? Any, ah, uh, to be honest, like the song they played on the on the episode did nothing for me. So, like, yeah, I don't remember. I, I'll take uh, I'll take uh, nickel over these guys. I'll take. Uh, the one where Buffy dances sexily. Chibo Mato. That was my favorite one so far. Probably. Well, that's oh. probably the only like legitimate band they've had so far. Oh, okay. Uh, well, aside from Dingo's Ain't My Baby. Hell yeah. <laughs> was that the same guy? Do they still have Cordelia's oh, yeah. ex-boyfriend? Yep, that's Devin. Devin. Okay. Is that still canon that that's her ex-boyfriend? Yeah. Okay. I uh, hope that they have an interaction at some point. That would, that would be funny. I don't remember if they do. <laughs> uh, so at the bronze, they're just hanging out, and then we see like a bunch of kissing. So we know that this is probably where the werewolf's coming. And then he crashes in. Buffy comes in. They fight. The werewolf leaves. Kane comes in. Kane's like, "Hey, fucking!" Bu oh, he's pissed because like Buffy, they they don't want to kill him because they don't. They, it's a human. 
right? But they, but he kills them and then sells them for like he keeps their teeth and sells their skin. Oh or whatever right, you do. Got, yeah, yeah, he, yeah. Like I don't remember what he says. He has a, a necklace of their teeth, right? But he sells the rest. Of, I don't know what the fuck he does. Yeah, because he says he used to be an ivory hunter. He used to kill elephants for their ivory, and it's against the law now. So he now hunts werewolves. Yeah, how's he sell those on the black market? I guess so, man. There's an episode of Angel where we see them. He like there's like a private club, and we see them serving, like uh, like the meal is a werewolf. Wow. And yeah, and so maybe maybe for that, it's like Temple of Doom. Uh, what's it, what? You know that scene in Temple of Doom where they're about to eat, and then they serve like a fucking monkey brain, and they're oh, like, yeah. "What the hell's going on here?" <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Um. All right. Anyway, we so th- that's what happens at the bronze, and then I guess we learn the, who the werewolf is. Yeah, yeah. We see him. Excuse me. We see him wake up in the woods. Yeah, and I didn't know who he was at first. He like started morphing, and I was like, "Oh, all right, it's like this guy." And then it like t- took a while, and then I was like, "Oh, fuck it, that's I guess that's Oz." But so and he has a Oz. classic. Classic cool response to this. He wakes up naked in the woods and he just goes, huh. Yeah, but I have a question. It, but Okay, so I know he says, huh, to I guess t- show us this is like a new thing for him. Mm. But this is not the first n- morning he's woken up like this. Yeah, I know. I think, about, I think about that every time I watch this episode. That made zero sense to me. But... I guess don't ask any questions to Rob. I guess that's why Rob and Dean got fired. <laughs> I don't think they got fired, <laughs> but sure. Uh, Josh fired them, and then they were like, "But what about in the last episode where an ex- when uh, Xander said we'll be back in thirty, we'll meet in thirty minutes?" And then he was like, "Hey, sh- get the- you're fucking out of here. Get yeah. out of here right oh, now." Oh man, I hope that was the exact interaction they had on this. <laughs> oh man, I can picture it. That'd be funny. <laughs> uh, all right, so. He he's a werewolf now, and I guess this is gonna be a thing for a long, long time. Well, it's um, part of the character, yeah. He calls uh, Aunt Maureen and Uncle Ken to find out. Oh, that was fun. It was set up earlier in the episode that he'd been bitten on the finger by his cousin Jordy, and so he really? called. Yeah, it, it's in the um the gym scene, like the self defense class scene. Oh shit! And uh, so he calls his aunt oh, and damn. uncle and asks them. Uh, Hey, so uh, is, is Cousin Jordy a werewolf? <laughs> yeah, I thought that that was funny. Um, yeah. Um, well, what's the thing on werewolves? They they don't have to like, they're not like vampires. They don't have to eat to survive, do they? Well, they're only werewolves three times a month. So they don't really need to eat. They're ever. just dangerous, I guess, around humans. Well, they say they like run completely on instinct. So like he can't control himself in werewolf form. Right. Okay. Um anyway, so they so they basically they're like who is the werewolf? We're trying to figure out who the werewolf is. And Xander has a suggestion who he thinks that it is. He believes that it's Larry. I don't it know was, why he it, thinks that. Because but. it was also set up earlier in the episode that Larry had stupid. Been, yeah, <laughs> Larry had been bitten by a dog. Oh, I do kind of remember that one. Yeah, Larry claims he was bitten by a dog. And so, so that was better than I thought, and I even really liked it. <laughs> yeah, I, I really enjoyed it. Um, but okay, so he, so he thinks that it's him. So he anything else happened in the library when they're mm. talking about no. who it might be? Okay. Um, so he goes to the locker room. Is oh, can I can I go back? There is a there yeah. was there is one dialogue exchange I really like in this episode. <laughs> that it was like earlier when they're talking about the car and 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 Giles is like one of the classics. I like when Buffy when uh when Willow gets scared because Giles says they found like animals dead, and she she's scared for the bunnies. And Oz says, "Hey, bunnies can really defend themselves. They're gonna be all right." And 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 Zan- and Will's like, yeah, yeah. I guess they never saw uh, Fatal Attraction, right? You remember she kills that little bunny? I forgot that, but yeah, the little girl has a bunny and she boils it in a pot. 
Boy, oh boy, yeah. <laughs> Great scene. Um, I hope they do that in the new Fatal Attraction with Lizzie Kaplan. I was kind of going to say something when you brought up the... Uh... Oh, and, and there's something in the next episode where they're talking about Angel, how when Angel kills on Valentine's Day, how he's like extra brutal. And they're like, one time he like nailed puppies to a stop sign and she's like, stop, stop. I, just, I guess she loves animals. Is that a new development? Well, that was Willow with the bunny thing, but it was Buffy with that. Oh, oh Bu- sorry. Buffy just goes like, I don't have a puppy. I don't need to know this. Okay. Yeah. I thought that was, that was even better. I thought that was yeah. way better. Buffy, <laughs> Fuck Buff, off. Buffy's way cooler. One's a joke and one's a serious line that you can't compare them. Yeah, you're right. I guess I prefer the serious line. Uh, what, where were we? Oh, uh, oh, we're at the locker room. Yeah, we sure are. Xander goes there and he's like, hey. Because cause Xander remembers Xander was a hyena? Yeah, that's no. right. It was hyena, right? And yeah, so- we, we actually get the thing where... Um, Z- Xander says like he c- he understands the werewolf because he's like experienced that like he knows what it's like to like run on instinct and shit and then uh, Buffy's like wait I thought you didn't remember anything from when you're hyena yeah basically he does he said yeah uh, there was something else I feel like one time where he lied about what he could remember no this something. is that I think he talks to Giles at the end of that episode and Giles is like I don't oh know. yeah 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 that's, what, that's exactly what I'm thinking of mm. great job you're, you're you're like an expert on Buffy kind of who, I am who knew who knew you know all this stuff uh, so he's in there and he's like hey Larry I know what you're going through and and I know it's hard but I don't know what he said, but he, but he, he tells him basically that I've been through the same thing and you could talk to me. And Larry basically tells him, he says, all right. He sort of drags on, right? He like goes on and on and you know what it's coming to, right? Like it goes on like five beats longer than it should. And then he's like, all right, I'm gay. And you're like, all right, I knew that like 20 seconds ago. Yeah. But whatever. Sort of like a that 70s show joke. That happened a lot on that semi show. I don't know. I I love that semi show. I do too. I wasn't talking shit. I watched that like se- '90s show. Yeah, and it wasn't that yeah. in love with it. Uh, but yeah, so Larry, it's revealed all the hidden on ladies we've seen in his previous appearances. It's overcompensation because he likes cocks. Yep, he sure does. And mm-hmm. uh, he doesn't really hit on Xander though, does he? Or does no. He- no, I don't. I think I think they just connect on that level. Like, wow! Like, I, I, I thought you were one thing, but you're you're like me. Well, they don't really. Xander seems a little like, oh no, he thinks I'm gay. Xander's a little gay, panicky, yeah. But but uh, I think it's a nice moment for Larry. <laughs> yeah, I think Larry's good in this episode. Yeah, I like I the act, the Larry actor. Has it been the same actor this whole time? Yeah. Yeah, I assume so. Is, is that other guy not here? His real name is Larry. Larry Bagby the Third is the name of the actor. Okay, all right. Um, Wait, what were you asking me? That other guy, he's not around in either of these episodes. Oh, Jonathan? No, he didn't. Jonathan. See him this week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You gotta warn me. Tell me like he's in the next episode, and I'll keep an eye out for him. Okay. Uh, here, I'll look up what his next episode. Is. Okay, perfect. Yeah. All right, so. We go to the library and Willow is talking to Buffy and she's like, hey, Buffy, would I be a slut if I <laughs> like made the first move? I do think she says that. So I'm not like saying anything. No, no, you're that. right. Yeah. And w- Buffy's like, no, that w- I think that you should, in fact. And Xander comes in. It's a very interesting, a lot of interesting relationship stuff in these two episodes. I'll be honest. These are oh, two of my favorite episodes. The we've next had. episode, Jonathan shows up. Okay. All right. Perfect. Yeah. Um, a lot of great relationship dynamics going on at this moment in Buffy. Like at the early on, remember, I was like, I don't think that this would work if this happened, and this wouldn't work if this happened. And now they've like laid the foundation pretty well. We're all I I buy into everything. And here we we get something where they're talking about like, man, it was so different back in the day. How like when we were younger, like a boy would just come over and he would hit you on the arm, and you would know like, oh, he likes me. And now it's so hard to tell. And Xander comes in and he's like, hey, what's up? And he hits Buffy on the arm. <laughs> and they don't really make a moment out of it, but it did happen. And I, maybe Buffy looked at it, but it did there happen. There is a weird moment with Buffy and Xander in this episode. 
Yeah, you're right. Even that, weirder in the next episode. But everybody's weird for saying her in the next episode. Yeah, but they go to the funeral home in this episode to like look at Teresa, and and that's when they find out she was killed by a vampire, not a werewolf. Mm-hmm. And uh, like Xander kills a vampire for the first time, I think since fucking jesse in the harvest he killed jesse yeah yeah I remember by accident he gets like pushed into a stake but he <laughs> does it, it by accident yeah he did it but he does it on purpose in this one yeah. and uh and then after that he and buffy are like uh you know maybe like uh a little heated they share a hug together yeah. no, it gets a little close could be a kiss but it doesn't go that way no it does not go that way by the way yeah because because she's really upset right now because she did it with Angel and then Angel still, for these two episodes at least, is still and jealous. He's still very bad. He has no soul or whatever they say, whatever the yeah. terminology is. That's You got it. And uh, so they... Well, what what happens? Uh, they re- oh, Buffy realizes basically that Oh, ba- well, basically what you said. Buff- Buffy realizes that Teresa died, but they never heard that she died from an animal attack. So that was kind of weird. So they go to her grave and they realize it was a vampire bite on the neck. And then she comes alive. Xander kills her. They have that little moment. Um, and she says like that, uh, that Angel turned her just to fuck with Buffy yes. even more. Yeah. Yes. Right. She, well, I wrote it down. She says, Angel says hello. Mm. Right? which is pretty good i actually don't even know if that's right you're saying it right now i don't know if that sounds right but uh she says something like that like this is a message for angel i think that's a line from the godfather too i think somebody says like this is <laughs> this is for somebody and they killed somebody um, uh, anyway. there's a guy from um do the right thing the pizza shop owner what danny aiello i think they had uh, danny aiello yeah. in the godfather too so, so. or the first one i don't know uh, anyway, so we go. Oh, Oz, Oz is home. He's chaining himself up. He's like, I don't want to hurt anybody. This is terrible news that I'm that I'm now a werewolf. I'm just gonna chain myself up. But then Willow shows up because she's ready to get her freak on because Buffy gave her the green light. So she's like, All right, now I'm yeah, gonna, I'm gonna come in here and things. Oz kind of she Oz. asked Oz to hang out earlier, and Oz had kind of stiff armed her. And she was right. like, what the fuck is going on with this guy? I thought he was really into me. Yeah, right? So yeah. she goes over there, and she's like, what the hell is all this? What are you all these chains? Like, uh, I'm into it, but on the first, first go around? I don't know about all that. What was Oz short for, by the way? Have we talked about that? Short, what? What is Oz short for anything? Oh, yeah. It, it eventually comes out that his full name is Daniel Osborne. Oh, wow. I'm sure that was big news for you. It was so fucking exciting, dude. <laughs> <laughs> he was like my favorite character around this point. <laughs> wow. Yeah, that's huge. Uh, you said you love somebody just because their name started with a D recently. Their name was Dalton. <laughs> Who was that? I don't remember. You said somebody's name was Dalton. And that, well, that was Dalton like... was that vampire with glasses. No, I don't think this might not have been a Buffy thing, but you're no, like, yeah. somebody's name started with a D. And I oh, it was Dawson. Dawson's da- Creek. Oh, Dawson. Dawson. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that was so funny. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but so he's going to he's gonna chain himself up, and B- B- Willow shows up, and then she's like, hey, what's going on? And then he turns into a werewolf, chases her around. Uh, they, well, where, where, where do they go? They, br- they run down the street somewhere. Uh, yeah, he just sort of runs away from. I mean, she runs away from him, and uh, so they basically they get like a tranquilizer gun and they run around. And who? who I guess Giles has a tranquilizer because Kane wants to kill him. I don't yeah. know, but they all get to like a certain point where uh, where are we at the end? I don't even know. Yeah, they they all converge and and they get Oz and uh. And Kane's annoyed with them. Willow does it. Willow is the one to tranquilize right. Oz, which was cool. And Buffy, and, Buffy, um, what she like bends Kane's gun and tells him to get the fuck out of town. Yeah, she says, "Don't let your, the door hit you in the ass on the way out." Because there's a lot of there's ass. a lot of misogyny in this episode. Kane's like, "A girl is gonna take down a world. What the fuck?" And uh, and she he says no one's man enough in this town, and she's like somebody is and fucking bends his gun. 
Yeah, that was pretty good. Um, I thought he more just hated their like ethical view of the whole thing. Well, I didn't it, know it, it was like a woman man thing. So much. it was a little, but it is now. Now that you mention, like she says the whole thing. Um, but so then we go to school, and Buffy and Xander. Xander's like, man, I don't, we don't really. I don't really know how to treat him anymore now that we know the big news. And Buffy's like, yeah, it's crazy. Oz is a fucking werewolf, and he's like, oh. Yeah, that's what I was talking about too. Oh, <laughs> uh, which is pretty funny. Um, so, so Larry comes over. He thanks Xander. Buffy's like, "Well, that was fucking weird." Uh, we get, uh, we get Willow and Oz. Do, do, do they talk? Yeah, they chat out out back, and uh, there's that great moment where Oz is like, "I guess I should tap out of this relationship. You don't want to be dating a werewolf, right?" And he's, she's like, hey, I'm in if you are. And he's like, I am. And she goes, uh, you know, three days out of the month, I'm not so fun to be around either. Yeah. I seem like, I seem like that was lowballing it. I never heard people say three days. Well, it, it worked in the context. I, th- I think it's a context. clever line. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever. Fine. I was yeah. being a werewolf is sort of a male period ref. Yeah. I understand. Uh, they say no biting, by the way. Yeah, so. I'm like, that might change. <laughs> uh, and then he says, oh, it, it ends. He says, a werewolf in love. Yeah. And then it ends. Yeah, beautiful moment. What do you give this one? I give it a four. A four? I'm, I'm going to give it a three. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, my goodness. So you're pretty low on it. Why? I, I really get, like this episode. I think it's good. I think it's good, but it's not like super special or anything. I thought, wait, where's Cordelia? I mean, making out with Xander in a car and shit. Oh, yeah, that's it, really, huh? I mean, that she's sucks. around. No, she's not. not she really. gets a lot to do in the next one. Calm down. In the ne- But we do episode by episode. We're talking about this episode. So she's not really in this episode. <laughs> All right. She is. <laughs> she's She's around. Her car, her dad's car was just detailed. She's upset about that. Okay. Uh, I really enjoyed this episode. I thought it like advanced everything in the story, but also like it it advanced Oz, but also advanced everything else. We even got like Angel do- doing some evil stuff, right? When Buffy being hurt from that, we had some weird Buffy and Xander stuff. Yeah. Um, now, that, now good. that the big bad guy is a regular on the show. It's a lot easier to keep those storylines ticking along in every episode. Like you'd go episodes in the first season without seeing the master or in the first half. We of do this... have a spike here, though. Yeah. In the first half of this season, you, you don't see Spike for a while, a couple of times. And uh, but now that Angel is Angelus, like you're going to see him every week. Yeah. Well, I'm going to give this four stars. You're going to give it three. And I, I'm, I think I'm going to put it third place so far between Jesus. when she was bad and angel holy shit i know i really like i feel like angel back in angel still wasn't even as good as angel now right yeah who's your mvp from this one? Oh my sorry we didn't do that part my mvp is either willow or oz i think mm. and i think i'm gonna go oz no willow is pretty good in this episode honestly all right well i was gonna right. go oz maybe you go willow <laughs> Yeah, I'll go Willow. She got the she got the Trank Oz. That was pretty good. Yeah. And that bunnies line. All right. And who's the LVP? <laughs> uh LVP, you can go Teresa for dying. <laughs> the gym teacher. Why didn't she really stand out to me? Yeah. Um Cordelia, she's not in it that much. I'm gonna go the gym teacher. <laughs> Who are you going to go with? I don't know. It's a funny pick. I, I kind of want to go with the, the gym cast, teacher, I think, too. About who did it for me, who didn't do it for me. Yeah, you know, I like Teresa and I like Kane. So, yeah, uh, uh, yeah I'll I'll stick with you. Or maybe, wow. you know what, my LVP? Lotion. Oh. Not why? bringing it. Not bringing it as a bronze band, in my opinion. All right. I like that pick. You even said earlier that you thought that. Yeah. Um. All right. Where do you rank this? Somewhere in the middle? <sighs> yeah, somewhere in the middle. Read me like... Uh, Let me start with what's my line, one and two. I might like it more than that. Go. Let me start go with Ted. Little... Yeah. All right, Ted, the pack. What's my line two? What's my line one? 
Keep going. Out of mind, out of sight. Welcome to the Hellmouth, the Harvest. Come on. Put the no. You put this uh, between out of mind, out of sight, and welcome to the Hellmouth. You like the Invisible episode more than I the like Oz the Werewolf invi- episode. Yes, I do. What the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> All right. So there we go. Episode. That was phases. I really like this episode. I think these might be the best two episodes we've had in at least a long time. Holy, last week was surprise innocence, man. Oh, you're right. You're right. That was stupid <laughs> of me to say. That was very stupid.